Well, you are listening to Azeb and her experimental band bringing that lo-fi, high vibe right here on B-Side. I am your host, Queen God Is, helping you navigate the soundscape of this little studio with a big heart. Yes, Brooklyn, please show your love one more time for mood music mystic, Azeb. How do you feel today? I feel lit. You do? You feel lit? Was it the lights from the studio or the light from within? Which one is it? Oh, man. All together, I That's guess. That's good. That's a good kind of lit. Mm -hmm. Azeb, you are singer, songwriter, producer, uh, MC, hmm. poet, and aspiring fashionista or designer in many ways. Um, so there's a lot of things to cover in this episode. But I've let's never start. That. Well, I mean, fashionista it's... designer. Yeah. You. You. Should I take it back or you want to keep it? No, I keep it. Okay, she's gonna keep it. <laughs> All right, good. Um, because in Brooklyn, New York, that is a difficult thing to just be shoving shoving out to everybody. Everybody does not earn that one. So we'll come back Thank to that you. later. But tell us where you are from and how you actually made your way to Brooklyn. Um. Well, I just moved from the Midwest, like Chicago, Indiana, Gary, Indiana area, and um. Uh, I just moved over here because I wanted to get a little bit more inspiration. I kind of wanted to throw myself into a bigger pond mm -hmm. uh, to kind of just feel out where my music belongs and stuff like that. So I've been received very well. Mm -hmm. and so I'm very thankful for that uh, in Brooklyn. So shout out to Brooklyn. Thank you, you know, for accepting the music. Um, before that, you know, I've been traveling around like 
Terre Haute, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. So I was down there laying roots for a little bit. With your family or was this just kind of part solo of your trip? Kind of just trip. me and uh, Sydney Phoenix back here. Okay. Were y'all finding yourselves? Is that what was happening? Okay. Yeah, finding mm -hmm. ourselves. And so far, how does Brooklyn compare to these other places that have been part of your journey? I would say that I actually really like Brooklyn a lot. And are you saying that because you're in Brooklyn right no. now? No. Most of the audience <laughs> is from Brooklyn, and Brooklyn has this way of like giving people that look, like, watch what you say about us. <laughs> no? No. No, actually, I haven't gotten that. I've okay. gotten more of like an accepting kind of, I got your back, you know, I, you, I got your back, you give me your back, you know, kind of thing like that, mm -hmm. you know, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, so I like Brooklyn a lot, actually. There's a lot of love here. A lot of love here. So yeah. We'll spread love. It is the Brooklyn way. <laughs> if anybody does not know where that comes from, you have to be escorted out of the audience right now. Okay, that said, before Indianapolis, before the Midwest, before Chicago, your family has roots in... Yeah, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Eritrea. And yeah. Eritrea. Yeah. Uh, Ethiopia being considered by many the cradle of humankind and of civilization. Mm. Um, let's talk about, have you ever been there? Yeah. You, were you born there? No. You were not born there. I had there. my first birthday there. You did? Yeah. That's big. It is, yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. I wasn't going to ask, but that's, I think that's important. What was your first birthday like? Um, it was amazing. I, mean, I don't really remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. What am I saying? It was amazing. <laughs> but um, it was just like my, the stories that I've heard. The way she said it made me feel like she had some kind of memory <laughs> of it. Um, well, speaking of memory, the first song is called Deja Vu, and it's followed by a series of songs with the word memory in them, and it's from your most recent project called Inner Child. Mm -hmm. Before we talk about Inner Child and these songs and like how your style, your song, your craft, everything evolved from when you were in the Midwest to now in Brooklyn, let us introduce these awesome people playing with you mm -hmm. and tell us how you met them. Okay, yeah, sure. I was working with Jen Giamanco here. She's the bass guitarist. Uh, she plays many instruments, but this is just what she's doing now. Um, she was working at Guitar Center, and um, she's, she's been supporting my music a lot, so I'm really thankful for that. And then Hi, this gentleman back here on the drums is Josh Allen. Hi, Josh. Yeah, he's also, I met him <laughs> at Guitar Center, too. Uh, they're both teachers there. Okay. So they're very talented individuals. Mm -hmm. And then also have Sydney Phoenix over here, DJ Sample Man. Hey, Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are all so cute. Yay. In the Brooklyn most raw gangster kind of way. <laughs> um, so you met them at Guitar Center, but Sydney you knew from, uh, from before, before, and y'all traveled yeah. in many parts of the globe. Together. Yeah, Sydney and I are actually together. Oh, good. So. See, so I didn't have to do a Wendy Williams and dig that no. up. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Good. Oh, and that's a ring involved yeah, in that equation. Yeah, little engagement here. <laughs> you must have liked it. And then put a yeah. ring on it. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Beyonce. Good round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, uh, do you have a ring too? You do. So she also liked it and then put a ring on it. That goes both ways, people. I just want us to be fair and clear on that one. All right, cool. Um, so Ethiopia, uh, Midwest by way of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. um, now Brooklyn. And this, do you feel like, in addition to being embraced here, that you can see the ways in which you've grown or hmm. been challenged? If so, how would you describe that? Like my growth? Mm -hmm. From each of these places to now being in Brooklyn. Um, outside of music, I always try to make sure I'm mindful of my actions. So one thing that I'm kind of proud of myself that I've achieved is to be more quiet, mm -hmm. to kind of silence my mind and be a better listener, because that's really important to me. Um, aside from that, just seeing myself in a more positive way, mm -hmm. because the way you view yourself is very, it's most important. From, from when you were in the Midwest, was that something that was a challenge? It was a challenge because Why? I was continuously trying to compare myself to other people and mm -hmm. trying to place myself in, you know, with other crowds when I just, I was just scared of being individual, I think, mm -hmm. and I'm becoming more uh, blossoming, you know, myself. That's so interesting. I just want to say this really quickly because Brooklyn is so big and there's so many artists here, people from all over the world now more than ever. Mm -hmm. And that simple fact and, and just and the idea of New York City alone can make people feel like, you know, going from big fish, small pond to a bunch of tiny fish mm. in an ocean, you know what I mean? Um, so to hear that you as an artist in the land of artists, I would say, mm. um, that you feel more centered, more confident, and more fully yourself 
and courageous enough to share that, that's a big deal. It almost seems backwards for, hmm. you know, relative to many people who come here and feel lost. Gotcha. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. yeah. If you could give advice to someone who has an opposite experience right now, another artist who came here seeking opportunity and got here and started to feel swallowed in a bit, what would you say? Um, I, there's only one you, hmm. you know? There's really only one you, so mm -hmm. that's what I try to remind myself of. No one can do me better than me. Mm -hmm. you know, that's how I feel. And everyone should feel that way. And that's a good quote to go into the next one. I want y'all to reflect on that. Y'all got it, right? <laughs> There's only one you, and no one can do you better than you. We are listening to songs from the current EP called Inner Child with Azeb Abraha and crew. Give it up one more time. The next song is called Memory One. What if I could remember, what if I could remember everything? What if I could remember, what if I could remember everything? Would you wait for me, wait for me? Oh, run away from me, away from me. Would you wait for me, wait for me? Oh, would you run from me, run from me? Would you run? You said you would wait for me in the next life, in the next life, in the next life, in the next life, maybe next time. You said you would wait for me In the next life, in the next life, in the next life, in the next life In the next life, maybe next time Running, 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 running Running, 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 running Running, 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 running Running and running away Running and running away, away, running and running away. I don't want to run no more. I'll be right here forever. I don't want to run no more. I'll be right here forever. new audience today so feel free to just jump right in there with the claps no instructions needed yes um, we are listening to the sounds of a Zeb and crew who has been uh, described as being lo-fi experimental hip-hop but also soul jungle classical trance pop and a partridge and a pear tree. Everything that you can think of is on this list to describe you and we just heard the song memory one um, 
before that Deja Vu, both of which are on the recent EP called Inner Child. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about on this album? Obviously there's this thought process or this inner reflective process, this recalling of something. Mm -hmm. um, and then the lyric in this song says, I don't want to run mm -hmm. no more. Um, so what are you talking about? What were you running from? What are you recalling? I mean, um, <sighs> I'm just running from all the bad memories. I'm uh, running from, you know, mislabeling memories as being bad. Okay. So I'm just kind of trying not to look back, I guess, in that kind of way, uh, and not get caught in the past and don't let it determine my future. Okay, let's clarify. So, well, you are looking back, but you don't want to look back in a way that qualifies as what you're seeing or what you've been through as bad or negative. Right. Right? Okay. Um, but then you also don't, so you want to kind of face it head on, but you don't want to get stuck. Exactly. In it. That's exactly. a pretty universal theme. I think that's a big challenge for like most people. How has this song helped people who've been going through something similar? Oh, actually, uh, somebody just hit me up on Instagram the other day. They um, listened to one of the songs that I had on Inner Child, and they asked me if I had put a like a frequency inside of it, mm -hmm. you know, one, one that like hits you or whatever. And I was like, not intentionally, you mm -hmm. know, but my, like I said, you know, beforehand when we were talking, I, I really like to heal with my music. I like to heal myself, and I think by doing that, I can help others do that. So that was a one case, like very clear. That's really interesting thought. For those who that may have who may have missed that, so the idea that in music is more than just uh, sounds and keys and notes and melodies, but that there is also frequency in these sounds that can uh, affect mood, thoughts, patterns, mm -hmm. habits, uh, addictions. The list goes on, and that is a not a, a tangible thing, but it's a powerful thing nonetheless. Um, and so you're not doing it intentionally, but what, it, it, what is interesting is that more than just a vocalist and lyricist, you are actually a producer, so you are creating the sounds that we are listening to. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that when you go into the studio to make these songs, that you know that you want to inspire and heal, but you're not necessarily thinking about it in a scientific or... Right, okay. exactly. Do you think that that's something that you're going to be le leaning towards? Yeah, you know, um, like Lupe's uh, lyric was like, music saved my life, mm -hmm. you know, like people say hip-hop saved my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, music, I would say, it helps me, mm -hmm. you know, it pretty much saved my life. Do you find yourself that when you're having those moments of regressing or looking at memories from a judgmental eye or being affected in a low uh, way, from past occurrences that you have a song of yours that you play for yourself? Yeah. And what song is that? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, it depends on how. I don't know. Now, if I were to try and pick myself up, I would listen to um, the Inner Child theme song that uh, is kind of like the one that the guy heard and actually healed himself. I don't know if you... Okay, My explain. titles are so vague. Okay. But it's just like... Um, Please don't forget, you know, your inner child, and that's like the mantra inside of the song. And it's just me playing piano mm -hmm. and with like some calming beach sounds of kids. And this playing. name of this song is called Inner Child. Yeah, the anthem. Yeah, the anthem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You anthem. also have a song on this album that you dedicate to your sister. We won't hear it today. But your sister's name's Le Leo, and she is currently um, pursuing a doctor degree, a medical degree in mm -hmm. Curacao. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to her uh, yeah. if she gets to watch this streaming at some point. But you created this song to inspire her. She was making that journey. And the, the, the repetitive lyric in that song is your inner child. Uh, oh yeah, please don't forget please your don't inner child. Please don't forget your inner yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah, because um, she's been wanting to be a doctor since she was like 12 or something. Mm -hmm. So the fact that she's like 32 now, mm -hmm. so the fact that she went and actually did it, mm -hmm. I mean, I can see a better example of pursuing your inner child or like not forgetting who you are, or like which really matters to you than her. And I got the pleasure or like, you know, blessing to escort her down to her school. Okay. So while I was down there, I was like, well, let me just shoot some video, you know, because it kind of reminds me of the song. So mm -hmm. I might as well. And this is your older sister. Yeah. Which is awesome, right? Because you did still, as the younger sister, get to escort her. And then you created a soundtrack for her next however many years in school and then residency that she gets to. Like, how many people went through school or you got a job or you do some kind of activity and then you have a set of songs that help you get through that four years or six years, right? So you've created music to help not only your sister but other people do that. Yeah, I guess I am kind of doing that on accident, man. <laughs> not really thinking about it. I'm glad it's going right. that way. Right on. All right, let's talk about 
your songwriting process. As a producer, which is big because that can be something, that, that means that you're self-contained. You don't necessarily have to wait for other people to send music your way. Artists at home, you know this whole process. You got your email, you find somebody on SoundCloud, you love what they do, you send them this note with your fingers crossed, can you send me something and hope that they don't be like a thousand dollars per song, you know, something like that. And cause sometimes we're inspired by people who are really awesome and we can't always afford them. And then there are moments when we have these relationships that just work and people are willing to work with you. But you, yeah, as in the case here, but you have this really special situation. Um, there's a select group of artists who, can, who do produce their own work. Kanye West is a great example of this. Um, we don't know the Kanye West that we would have got if he wasn't producing his own songs or producing first. Right, so he, he got to discover sound and then create a sound around his own life, around his own work. What is that process like for you? How often do you get lost in the beat making? Uh, or how do you pull yourself out of that part of it and get into the lyrics, or does it happen at the same time? It kind of happens all at the same time. Mm. Yeah, it kind of happens at the same time. Um, the reason I started making beats to begin with was because I got tired of listening to the radio. Right. This is a favorite so, response of yours. Yeah. Every time you get interviewed, like, you got tired of listening to the radio. Yeah, I just got tired of it. What year was this that you got tired of listening uh, when to? I was, like, 15. Okay. So, so that was a like, while ago. Because yeah. radio has really evolved. <laughs> yeah. It's true. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that after this next song. Just the, the transformation of listening. Mm -hmm. We have all of these other arenas to engage artists and to learn about new stuff and to be inspired. Um, and I think we can definitely see that in your work. Give it up one more time for Zeb and crew. We're going to be listening to Memory 2. In memory one, we talk about not wanting to run anymore. Memory two, which we just heard, we talk about the war is over. Um, is there anything else you want to share about these two songs and their relationship? Um, well, when I was producing them, I made all those songs together. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of kept flowing into each other. Okay. 
Um, and they are based on real situation or incident, or after the first song, did you find that your imagination just started to go wild and it went from uh, the first song being about an actual memory and then the next two being about a theme? Yeah. Um, the first, I blame myself a lot for things, um, so that's kind of where memory one came from. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stop trying to blame myself, and that's why for the second one I was like, the war is over, you don't have to fight yourself anymore, you're good, you know? Mm -hmm. And then in memory three, um, which you'll hear next, is like, um, wasn't it you that told me to let go? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just kind of like healing myself and like talking to myself and mm -hmm. second perspective, so. Yeah. Wasn't it you that you t that told me to let go? Yeah. Uh huh. Wasn't it you that told me? Yeah. And that is a uh, question is. to yourself. Yeah. Once you forgot what we learned from memory one and two. Exactly. It happens. All right. It so happens. for those of you I who know. are going through a parallel journey, start with memory one. Go to memory two. Go to memory three. Go back to memory one. <laughs> can go back to memory three. Just in case you I forget. Know. I think that's brilliant. I think that's really wonderful because we learn things all the time. Yeah. Things that potentially help us grow, things that as soon as we learn it, we want to get on social media and start telling everybody else, you know, like these amen sessions that we have on, on uh, Instagram with the quotes and stuff like that. But there, I think one of the upsides of doing that, learning something and then want to post about it right away, is that eventually when you go back through your own feed, you have to remind yourself. You, there's going to be a day when you're going to need to remind yourself mm -hmm. to do that. All right, well, speaking of memory, I'm going to call out some names. and you, I want you to tell me what these uh, names mean to you. Okay. Bjork, Coldplay, Gorillaz, M.I.A., Dido. Ah, yes. <laughs> They're great people. Bjork yeah. is dope. Mm -hmm. She produces all her stuff. She plays like so many instruments and she's just so weird and like fashion mm -hmm. forward. I just love, I love how she's so cool with being herself. Mm -hmm. Like I really respect that about her. Mm -hmm. she's, she, like she said it in an interview, she says, I have full creative control. <laughs> it's like, I like that. I want to be like that, you know? Um, the producer wants you to know, or wants to ask, do you know that Bjork lives around the corner from Brick Studios? Wow. We are not encouraging anyone to become a stalker. <laughs> not at all. Bjork, if I you're mean, watching, me. which I'm sure you are, hey. You should have told me hey, that. Hey, boo. <laughs> um, so big up to Bjork. And what about Coldplay, Gorillaz, MIA, Dido? I love Coldplay. Like, I love um, Chris Martin because he plays the piano. I play the piano also. Mm -hmm. And he kind of made me feel like you could make cheesy music. Does that make sense? I don't want to call this it. This is a compliment, though, right? It is a very, okay. it's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a compliment. Because I just, like I said, I, had, I have, in the past, I had a tendency to think of things as like bad or good, negative yeah. or positive. And I was so, like, what do you mean by cheesy? Like, you mean cool. Free. You know, free yeah. of the. Uh, like, of I can make. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I can make happy music and mm -hmm. it's okay. So <laughs> all of these songs are the happier time of radio. Like this is when you heard these, this was a time where these artists may have come on your radio station and you were still happy with radio. And then there was a point around 15 years old where that was not happening mm. anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And you decided that if you want something and it's not being provided, you gotta make it and then your career as a musician was reborn, or I say reborn because speaking of National Poetry Month, which we uh, referenced briefly at the beginning of the show, you started out as a poet, mm -hmm. correct? Spoken word artist. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people try to separate the world of poets and musicians, but I, for me, my perspective is that they very much are intertwined in a lot of ways. A lot of poets do make the transition from mm -hmm. writing and if you're a spoken word artist, sharing aloud, but then carrying that relationship with lyric making into songwriting, mm -hmm. which is not an easy craft. What was that journey like for you, going from being a self-identified poet, which is a big deal, to now being a singer-songwriter? Mm. Well, I mean, like you said, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't that hard for mm -hmm. me. I mean, it kind of seemed like it just did naturally it fell into that, you know, because I was playing piano. And then I was writing lyrics separately, and then I was like, "Well, why don't I just put these two together?" Okay. You know. So. So, like, would you ever perform your poems to music behind you? Yeah. You would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would. Well, yeah. Let's talk about that transition. Was that transition to keep up with the times? Like you felt like the direction of people's attention was going more into like people who had songs, or was it like a natural like shedding? Like you felt like your poet self really wasn't doing it for you anymore, and you wanted to evolve. That's exactly that's what, what it was. was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was a time where I was just like, man, I don't know if I can really, I don't know, the spoken word thing is kind of, 
I'm getting tired of it, I guess. Tell so me I, why, tired. And you're speaking to someone who has been self-identified as a poet and a spoken word artist and a coach of poetry and spoken word for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I hear you, but mm -hmm. I would love to hear from you why. I don't know. Just because I like to push myself forward. So mm -hmm. into like a different direction, like try new things. Try new things. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I was like, let me, you know, stop spitting all these words. I feel like it's falling on deaf ears. You know, maybe if I put some music behind it, it would like, I don't know feel different, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you ever dabble back in poetry or take the music away and just get on the mic and... I haven't in a while, actually. How about now? <laughs> Give her a round of applause for a freestyle poem from Arzan. <laughs> if you would like me to hum behind you, <clears throat> me, 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 I can totally... Are you serious? Jen and I, yes, right there. You don't even have to move. The mic is on. Oh, I you can't can remember any spoken word pieces right now. Or a freestyle one. This has never happened on the B-side stage before, by the way. Okay, I gotta take advantage of it. Okay. Hmm. And it okay. doesn't have to be long. Very good. Hmm. This might sound like a rap. All right. Don't underestimate this pretty face and thick frames. I'm a monster. Nature ain't got to do with my nurture and I'll vulture your corpse until you only elope in catacombs. Call it necra cause I know my feel has euphilia. So in love with these twisted words and fake thugs that honor these Drake like Dracula's suck the blood right out of ya. Ooh. I'm so glad that we got to that moment. We are gonna continue with more music, but that was a special moment for me because hip hop and poetry is such a big part of my life, my trajectory, and my relationship with a lot of artists all over the world. And I always love talking to them about um, the role, particularly of, lyric, of lyrics, of lyricism in their craft. Um, and it's not a conversation that you can have with everybody all the time. A lot of people rap, but they ain't everybody, everybody don't got bars, mm. right? For those at home don't know what bars means, please hashtag it and look it up. <laughs> But I, I think it's something really special about a human being who has a relationship with language, whatever their language is, and putting words together to express not only straightforward thought, but a whole world, a universe of thoughts to play with words and all that stuff. That, in National Poetry Month, I wanted to take this extra moment to emphasize that because it is a gift. We, we know that when a lot of people do not have access to that gift, that they really they struggle in a lot of ways, so we don't take it lightly. Um, and so, yeah, let's give it up for her one more time for, for those bars. <laughs> the next song is what happens when people do not have a healthy sense of expression, um, and we're seeing a lot of that in the world today. We're gonna hear uncivilized Azeb and crew. Thank you. This is kind of like a poetry song. Right on your heels, bite your Achilles, ashes to dust. I'm hurting your feelings. I don't give a what. It's not appealing. Smile turned upside down. Such a short notice. I barely notice. Bearing yourself, shake it for quarters. Got to step up from dimes. To the east side, more comfortable quarters. Now all of your time is tracked on recorders. Don't step out of line, but they made it for us. Do you even know? Do you even really want to know? Do you even know? Do you even really want to know? Did they ever show? you anything believe none that you see half that you read and all that you feel why is trusting yourself such a big fear mislead your mind rewriting history one test at a time society's perfect they're uncivilized third world country third eye blind pioneer gland calcified dismiss me as crazy tossed her outside She's uncivilized. Do you even know? Do you even really want to know? Do you even know? Do you even really want to know? 
What I love about this song is that we get to kind of address a few things, but we get to redefine the word uncivilized. Exactly. It's a term that has been used to abuse nations of people because of their differences, because of their relationship or lack of relationship to technology, which has nothing to do with wisdom or advancement, hmm. um, true advancement. Um, <sighs> And it's also a great segue into a really prominent theme in the world right now. And it's always been, but it's kind of been re propagandized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that the word? I don't know. I made it up. Anyway, um, <laughs> immigration. Let's talk about immigration. As a, a, a woman or child of Ethiopia who has migrated a bit, traveled a bit to end up here in New York, the States. Um, and I imagine have a relationship with this conversation around immigration and not being welcome or wanted or worthy. Hmm. And I'm, I'm, there are other layers in the song as well. Let's talk about immigration. Let's talk about your relationship to that um, concept and this experience that we're having in the world right now with all this anti-immigrant sentiment that's being rehashed. Hmm. Um. Well, my mother is an immigrant, so I'm a first generation here. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother was kicked out of her country because they were warring there in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. um, they were like fighting for their independence and all this kind of stuff. So in the 70s, she was forced to leave. Um, when she came here, um, I mean, she wasn't very well received, you know. Um, so I, she tells me a lot of stories and I just, I can't really say everything, but. Of course. It's just like, it's just sad, you know, mm -hmm. it just, it just really sucks. It, it hurts. It is she hurts. still here? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Has her experience changed a lot or has it gotten worse as of, re as of late? Mm. She's How's pretty that? stubborn, so. Yeah. Uh, I don't think she's going to change anymore. Right on. For, I think it's, for others. it's that stubbornness of like immigrants, which is why we're even able to like maintain and sustain through the craziness of the world right now. Totally. First of all, let me just say this. Um, for anybody who does not know, people usually say, I hate to break it to you. I'm so happy to break it to you right now. <laughs> that um, there is no such thing as a non-immigrant in America. Unless you are indigenous, everybody here has come either through being forced, um, seeking asylum, uh, expectation of a greater possibility or mm -hmm. options like there's so many lists and I think that regardless of where you fall on that spectrum of why you ended up here or how the point is that we made our way here from somewhere else um, so this idea is really a false effort to find another divisive way mm -hmm. another way to divide people how do you think mu music, or your music in particular, counteracts that? Well, like I said, I mean, I feel like it, I don't discriminate in my music, I don't know, I don't, I really, I just make music, I don't know. Well, that's not true, <laughs> Isaiah. I don't think you, I mean, obviously you don't discriminate in a way that you're trying to cause harm yeah. or destruction to someone or, you know, a group of people. But you do have opinions, and you do have things that you believe that are contrary to, to things that other people believe, um, and whether or not... Yeah, like the whole concept of third world country is just ridiculous to me. Yeah. It just doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. Like you said, everyone's an immigrant, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Um, so I just try to, to speak life into people. I try to open their minds with my music. I try to make them see different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, and try to, you know, just unite in that sense by like helping you come to your inner self and actually have an honest conversation with yourself. Because I feel like a lot of people don't really want to have that conversation, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you can 
just be honest with yourself for a sec. Mm -hmm. You might learn something. Right. So. Let's talk about spirituality. Let's talk about how spirituality, whatever that is for you, has a role in your process of self-reflection and wanting to share that, offer that to your listeners. Right. Yeah, spirituality. I was reading this quote the other day. It was uh, Mahatma Gandhi, and he said, that's how you, that's how you pronounce it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi, uh, he said, you can tell the, um, the true nature of a society by how they treat their animals. And I think that's a very good point. Um, I try not to kill anything and stuff like that. So I think that's spiritual kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And if you have respect for an animal, you know, an ant, then you can, you can like, life is different, it's bigger, it's like more important, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. If I'm no, it's interesting sense. because I think here sense? in America, there's a grand dichotomy with that. On one end, you have people who are slaughtering, butchering, mm -hmm. putting animal head, you know, trophies on their wall. That's taxidermy, right? Is that the word for it? I, yeah. I don't even want to know the word. Like, I, one time I saw a giraffe head on a wall. Do you know how long a giraffe neck is? Okay, that's neither here nor no. there. But the point is, like, that happens. <laughs> Obviously not in this country. People go to Africa. People go to other places where animals are, are in their natural habitat to shoot and kill them down. I mean, it also happens here. Yeah. Um, but then the other end of the spectrum is you have dogs who are better dressed than anybody in this room. Dogs, you know, animals that have their own homes and things like that. What does that say about this country that we have both extremes of that in relation to the Mahatma Gandhi quote? I mean, I guess it means we have hope if you want to say it in okay. a positive way. Yeah, okay. we have hope. One thing America has is a little bit of everything, like you said. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you, but it also at the same time, it's, it's distracting. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to get lost, if you get lost in it, you know. My mom always says that America gives you the room to f up. <laughs> it's like it's like freedom, the freedom to f up. You know yeah. what I mean? So and some like, people are just doing it a lot. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. speaking of really quickly, I just want to acknowledge. Uh, Stefan Clark and uh, the young man who has just gone down not, uh, long not far from here um, speaking of the treatment of animals there's this conversation underneath this that uh, when horrific things happen to animals in this country people are way more up in arms than when they actually happen to, hip, to human beings um, let's take that note hmm. take a deep breath on that let's segue into a conversation about hip hop I feel like hip hop is really quickly an immigrant in and of itself. Like it, it, my, it, it made its way into the the music world, and it was not quite welcome. It was not quite native. It was not quite um, the list goes on. Um, but then it became something that taught a lot of people something new uh, mm -hmm. about themselves and about the, the world. Um, you have a strong relationship to hip hop because you went from being a poet to being an MC, and then ultimately to being a singer songwriter. Uh, let's talk about your MC days. What is hip hop to you? Hip hop, hip hop is like freestyling, and hip hop is like, I guess in like a general way, the positive form of rap. If you want, uh, that's okay. kind of the general way uh -huh. of saying it for me. Uh -huh. It's like hip hop actually has conscious lyrics, like things that I appreciate. You know, as opposed to rap, it's just about being like flashy and stuff like that. But in the same token, it's like rap is kind of being misdefined. I guess it just means words on beat. Mm -hmm. How did you end up becoming an MC? Was it something that you stumbled upon? Just a natural progression from poetry? Were you writing poems that rhymed a lot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got I was it. always writing things that rhymed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. We want to continue this conversation about hip hop after this next song, um, which is called Memory 3. Um, if you want to tell us anything about Memory 3 before we hear it. Mm. No, you can just listen to it. Okay, we're just yeah. going to listen. We're going to come back and talk about hip-hop with some other really cosmic, insightful, and down-to-earth things. Give it up one more time for Azeb and Thank you. Wasn't it you that told me that I should let go 
Wasn't it you that told me that I should let go? Well, let go. Well, let go. Well, let go. Wasn't it you that told me that I should let go? Well, let go then. Let go then. I took offense when you left me back on the battlefield. Empty barreled and haggling. Long limb LeBron and now I'm traveling. Flounder on and swim with a different flow in a different pond. Green the grass on a different lawn. Indifferent path with a lasting bond. Yep, double cup to savor. I don't need no favors. Labored hard for my own work. Start working smarter than your homework. Heart in the wrong place, only getting older, colder. Drinking more and getting less sober. Always listening to everything that they done told ya. But I got to be me. I got to be free, yeah. Wasn't it you that told me that I should let go? Well, let go then, babe. Let go then. But wasn't it you? Let go then, babe. Yeah. Let go then. Here in a combination of songs from several of Azeb's projects, uh, including the most recent Inner Child, um, a previous album called uh, Azeb, self titled, um, and this song again, Memory Three, rounds out our memory collection mm -hmm. where you are speaking to yourself. Like, didn't I tell you we go, we went through this already? Uh, <laughs> I know. It's cool, it happens. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about here. But one thing I want to give a compliment, I really appreciate your lyricism skills. I always love a good song when a, a rhyme just sneaks in there. Mm -hmm. um, your lo-fi brand of music, I mean, it's just really scaled back. It's like we really get to sit with the vibe and also zone out to the words and hear them. And not every relationship, every artist relationship to hip hop allows for that. Like we are in the generation of mumble rap, which is also fine because it's the sound of things that's also important. So sometimes we're grooving to the sound. We have no idea. They could be telling you to go home and do such and such to the person you love the most. You would have no idea. You're just in the club nodding your head like that. <laughs> um, you know, we're at risk of that right now at this generation. But, you know, there's also a value in range of material. You have some MCs who really want you to get every word that they're saying, and then you have some that like, please don't hear anything that I'm saying at all. Just, just nod your head and, and move along. Um, I want to talk to you about your hip hop influences. Name your top five women MCs of all time. Women MCs? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. I don't really listen to female MCs. Ooh! That sucks, yes. I'm sorry. No, yes, be sorry, be very sorry. Oh, Lauren Hill. <laughs> okay. Lauren Hill for sure. I guess MIA is kind of like a lyricist, but she's not really hip hop, but she still be rap. Hmm. Lauren Hill, MIA, okay, just give me one more. We'll cheat. Uno, Ma. Oh, I can't think of one. 
Azeb. We're going to add Azeb to the third person on that list. Oh, wait, uh, Queen Goddess. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We need you to go home and do better on that one. Yeah. I mean, because you actually have a strong relationship with MC and hip hop, and I feel like even though you may not necessarily be an organic fan of everybody, there's some jewels in there to explore. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, of jewels, you have these three wonderful musicians behind you, two of whom you met by working at Guitar Center, which you're no longer there. You're kind of really going full force into your... Um, your craft and into your work um, but I just wanted to acknowledge both of you because you are still not only musicians but you are teachers uh, of uh, you get to teach instruments to whoever is interested give me one word each what it's like working with Azeb I'll, you say it I'll repeat it um. speechless <laughs> powerful, powerful. Experimental, good. Experimentation is good. We get to discover new things. And last but not least, um, we're going to hear him on this next song called Ragnarok. You've heard that term before. And this song is going to be on Fox. On the, it's on the album Fox and Wolf, which is a very interesting idea. Um, we don't have too much time to talk about it, but I do want you to tell me one word. What it's like working with your wife? Awesome overall. All right. He, he said awesome overall for those of whom can't hear it. That is the perfect answer, sir. Good job. Congratulations. Um, I also think it's kind of cool, speaking of hip hop, that do, is it a, I don't mean to compare, but is it a Jay Z, Beyonce kind of vibe? Meaning, when y'all are having one of those natural days where you're not quite getting along, whether it's because of the music or the stresses of the world or just mood. Does that help us get like a next set of series of albums out of you? Like so, for example, like wow. your, your your version of counseling to make the the, the, the relationship continue to work is that y'all battle rap each other on the next Thank album? You. Is that something that happens? Quite possibly. It could. He said it's coming to a theater near you. Yeah, we've definitely. I felt like we battle rap before. He motivates me to freestyle a lot. He's mm -hmm. a freestyle beast. Do you take the relationship or the energy of the relationship, the challenges, the highs, the lows, out on the music? He definitely pushed me to like push my production and like structure with like methadone and stuff like that. Shoot. Okay. So he's saying that he, you're not mic'd, and you're not, you're not mic'd, and so uh, I just want to say he's saying that the relationship does push his production, and he, the relationship for you pushes your your courage and emceeing and freestyle ability to experiment. Lots of cosmic, grounded, experimentational, fun, deep, centering things happening here. Give it up one more time for Azeb and to We had a good time. In the wise words of today's special guest, and as evident here, you must be involved to evolve. Thank you, Azeb and crew for transforming this space with your musical explorations of time and space and for making time and space for us to join you. If you all want to stay involved with the magic of Planet B-Side that is, you can check out this and past episodes on our YouTube channel using the hashtag B-SideVK and our podcast on soundcloud.com slash B-Side podcast. Or just come on by the studio and feel the glow up close. I am your host, Queen God Is, saluting National Poetry Month, along with some of our great champions of word and action, Winnie Mandela, Maya Angelou, Martin Luther King Jr. And you, Brooklyn, we love you. Till next time. You came to rock, you came to rock. Yeah, you came to rock, you came to rock.
came to rock. I came to rock, I came to rock. You came to rock, you came to rock. I came to rock, you came to rock. You came to rock, you came to rock. You got to let be your being. Don't stop, don't stop. Breathe out and in again. Don't stop, don't stop. Feeling come from within. Rise up, rise up. Grasp on to it. It only lasts for a bit. Grasp on to it. It only lasts for a bit. Grasp on to it. People in the crowd, just put your hands up and wave with me. Some more vibes. Yo! Burn like a phoenix reef, born in a helix. Creeping like a steel pond, moving like a newborn. Creeping like a steel boy, ripping like a steel toy. Be this way, mix a mouth, boy, baby, people will stay back. Moving to another level up, elevated in my temple, it's irregular. They don't understand us. They can never brand us, elevated in my tour bus, elevated till I feel trust. Uh, stand for the feeling, regardless if it's a pillar. Put your hands to the ceiling and self feel for real. Hands to the ceiling, even if they're killing. Cat dark skin, leave it here the villain. Make it all the pillar, tell it me I'm sinning. Cause I wanna make a living off living. Look, I made a million off living. Come on.